In this video, we're going to take a look at React Router version 4 link components. I'm in our projects app.js file here, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the link component from React Router DOM. So one thing I didn't really mention in the earlier video was that in React Router version 4, all of the components you use are standard React components. So you can actually go into the React Router DOM source code and view those and you'll just see React code. So it should actually make a lot of sense if you want to dive in and examine the source code. And all we're doing here is we're just using these React components and then passing in different props depending on what the component is and what we want it to do. So now I've got our link component imported. I'm just going to go ahead and delete some of this code here because we don't really need it. And let's go ahead and create our first link component. So of course we need to have the link and let's just have home as a text for that and let's close off that component. Now the same way in version three, a link has a to property and then the string of the URL path that you want that link to go to. So in version four, it's pretty similar. There are some things we can do differently but we'll explore those in a second. So let's just go ahead and add the to prop and we'll make this one forward slash home as I believe that's where our index path goes to and I'm right, yeah. So save that and head on back over to Chrome. Uh, let's get rid of the dev tools and refresh and you'll see obviously our header and the logo and stuff was gone because we've deleted that and we've now got this home link here and I'm just gonna zoom in in case you can't quite see that. So we've got our home link and when we click on it, we go to the home component, which in this case says hello. So that's just the basic link component in React Router version four. It's pretty much the same as the basic functionality from version three. So there shouldn't be really too many differences there. There are a few things that you can do differently in regards to the two property. So in version four, we can actually pass in a object and we can pass various things into this object. So let's just take a look at how we can do that and what we can pass into that object. So when we pass an object to the to property, the first thing we need to pass in is the path name. And this is the same as just when you pass in the string to the to property. So in our case, the path name is just gonna be forward slash home. Let's just go ahead and save this and jump over to our index.js file. And rather than rendering out this component in line here, I'm actually gonna go ahead and create a component just so we can console.log out some props and things and see what's going on. So I'm just gonna create our home component, which is gonna be stateless functional component, and we'll pass in our props, and we'll console.log out those props. And then we'll simply return this h1, but I'm gonna change it to be home rather than hello as it is the home component. So let's change this component and let's pass in the home component itself. So if you save this, go on back over to Chrome, uh, make sure your browser's refreshed. You'll see we still get the home component when we go to forward slash home, which is what we expect. Now, if you open up your developer tools, you'll see we get this object from our home component logged out to the console. And you'll see this object has a history, it has a location, it has a match, and it has a static context. Let's start off with the match property. So you can see it's got four properties here. We've got an is exact, which is a Boolean. We've got a params, which is an object. We have the path, and then we have the URL. So let's start off with the is exact. At the moment, it's true and the way that this determines whether it's true or false is if our path we pass into the URL is an exact match. So at the moment it is because our path is forward slash home. But if we were to go to forward slash home one, two, three, for example, sorry, forward slash home forward slash one, two, three, open up the console again and go to the match, we'll see that we get is exact is actually false. But you can see that our path was still actually met, it still rendered out the home component, but it's not an exact match, so is exact is false. The next prop we'll take a look at is this params object here. 
So you'll notice that we're going to home forward slash one, two, three, and our params object is still empty. So to get this to populate with our forward slash one, two, three, which might be the ID or a search query, for example, let's go on over to our index.html and in our path, let's do forward slash colon and then ID. And this will be our query params from our URL. So save that, head on back over to your browser and to the console and let's look at the match property. And you'll see that our params object now has the ID parameter and it has the one, two, three as the value. And that's getting that from our URL forward slash home forward slash one, two, three. So this will be whatever you say in your path. So this could be forward slash search forward slash blah, 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 whatever you want. And that will get reflected as a param provided it's passed in, of course, and then you'll get the value of that. And now you'll notice that there is a difference between our path and our URL. So the path is obviously the path that we specify to our root component. So in this case, forward slash home forward slash colon ID. And then the URL is just a URL that you go to in the browser and that this root matched on. I'm not gonna go into what location and history are at the moment. That's something we'll come back to later on. So the next thing I want to take a look at is a new component called the nav link component that gives us some nice helpers to essentially style our links depending on whether they are selected or not. So just in our index.js, let's just go ahead and get rid of this forward slash ID in our path and head on back over to our app.js. Instead of importing a link, we're gonna import something called nav link. So let's change these component names as well. So now we're using a nav link component. And I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this object from the to property here and turn it back to a string just to make things a bit tidier. Okay, so the new nav link component, as I mentioned, gives you some helpers to style your links depending on whether they are active or not. And one of these is called the active class name prop. So let's go ahead and pass that in and see how that works. So active class name and you pass this a string. So we'll make this we'll make this class called active. So if we just save this, head on back over to the browser, head on to forward slash home, we'll see that we are active again. Open up our console and let's just inspect this element here. And you'll see that as we're active, we get the class of active. So what we can do is in our CSS, we can just go ahead and give this a quick rule. So if it's dot active, let's just make the text green. Save that. Oh, text, that should be color. Make the color green. Save that, head on back over, and you'll see that our link is now green and it has a class active. And in fact, to make this clearer, let's just go ahead and make a, another nav link. And we'll make this one forward slash contact. And we'll keep the active class name here as well. And let's just make this contact, save this, head on back over to the browser. And you'll see that we now have two nav links and we have one that is active and one that is not active. And if we click contact, you'll see that contact becomes active and our home is no longer active. So that's just a nice little helper there to help you style your links depending on whether they are active or not. There are a few more props you can pass to a nav link. So you can actually pass in an active style prop rather than a active class name. So we could do active style and that is just an object and in that object you pass in the CSS. So we'll make this color and we'll make this red. So if we save this, head on back over, you'll see that now when we have the class of active, so when our contact is active, we get some inline styling and our color is red and our contact is red. And if we head on over to our home component, you'll see that our home goes to green and the contact one loses the active styling. 
So another cool thing we can pass into the navlink is a prop called is active. And this prop takes a function. So we'll go ahead and create a function called check active. So let's just create this function up here and we'll call it check active. And it's just going to be an arrow function for the moment. Check active takes two arguments, it takes the match and it takes the location. And let's just console.log both of those out. So we'll log out our match and we'll log out our location. And just before that as well, I'm going to log out some text to say that we are in check active. So the check active function either needs to return true or false, depending on whether you are happy that you want this link to be active or you don't want this link to be active. So just to start off with, I'm going to go ahead and return true so that this is always active. So in our case of here, when we go to forward slash home, we are always going to have the active function return true, and this is always going to be active. So if you save this, head on back over to the browser and go to forward slash home, and then open up your console, you'll see that in check active, we get the match and we get the location object as well. And you'll see that our home is active. But if we go to contact, you'll notice something odd as well. We actually get the check active function being called again. And this time the match is null and our location is a separate object. So what this means is that whenever you go to a nav link, as long as one of them has an is active function declared within it, the check active function is going to get called. And just to prove that this is working as we would expect, if we go ahead and return false from our check active function, head on back over to the browser and go to home, you'll see that home does not get the active styling, so it doesn't get the green text. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.